Det är många bekanta ansikten som jag har varit och lyssnat på, både Africa Oil och andra bolag inom den vingruppen tidigare. Då känner ni mig också, jag heter Robert Eriksson och jobbar med investerarkontakter och mediekontakter för alla den vingruppsbolagen egentligen som är noterade i Stockholm. Så att det finns några frågor så kan ni alltid leta upp mig på olika bolagens hemsidor och, och höra av er. Men ikväll ska vi fokusera på Africa Oil och eh, Africa Oil vet ju ni som är aktieägare har haft en Fantastisk kursutveckling. Det var en av de bästa aktierna både i Toronto och i Stockholm förra året. Så, men, och då tänkte jag också passa på att säga att presentationen har alltid hittat i på engelska. Men finns det några frågor sen på svenska så får du bra ställa dem så ser vi till att de blir översatta. Men engelska eller svenska väljer ju själva. Så so, med det vill jag ta över till Keith Hill som är CEO av Africor. Thanks, Robert. Appreciate it. Always uh, happy to see the uh, turnout I get here in Sweden. Uh, always like coming to Sweden in the middle of February uh, or March because it makes me feel very good that I've moved to Nairobi. Uh, <laughs> 75 degrees, 25C every single day of sunshine. So, uh, it's always good to, to reinforce that a little. Anyway, as Robert said, I, I think we've had a, a very good year in uh, South Africa oil. And I think it's uh, only the beginning of a uh, Hopefully, a number of good years. I think we've, we've been quite successful so far, but I think uh, we're all hoping that this is just the tip of the iceberg. That uh, we're just getting into the uh, basins. We've, we've drilled three wells. We've had three successes. Two of them very commercial. One of them, and Pai Pai, still a little bit un unclear whether it's commercial or not. But uh, I, I think we're off to a very good start, and uh, I think this is going to be our, our, our real banner year. Um, we will have as many as six rigs working by the third quarter. So I think uh, you'll see a lot of drilling this year. And the good news is that uh, we've raised our money and we've got a very full treasury. We've got $250 million in the bank. And uh, I can assure you we're going to be spending that wisely and we're going to be spending it mostly on drilling. So as I said, a, a very good year this year. Uh, really the highlights are the two discoveries we made on the tertiary basin uh, with Tullow, uh, Gami, and Puiga. Uh, it's opened up a whole new basin. and. Uh, uh, <coughs> I'm equally happy that we actually get very good test rates out of it. I think when we met last time or in the fall, we talked about, yes, we found big, thick columns of oil, but there was a little bit of concern whether that reservoir quality was uh, good enough. But after the testing of the well and the core data we got from Tuiga, I think both our Tullow and ourselves are feeling very good about the quality of the reservoir. And I think uh, uh, we see the same type of reservoir at Gamia that we do at Tuiga. So the next thing up uh, is going to be tweaked testing, and I think that's going to be a very interesting well. Um, we have mobilized two additional rigs now, so they're on their way. Um, we'll have a, a third additional rig coming, so by the third quarter we'll actually have six rigs. And what I'll do today is I'm going to talk a little bit about what we've done in the past, but I'm really going to focus on what the program is going forward. I'm going to give you some timelines, and people are always asking me when things are going to happen. I will say to you that not a single time have we actually hit any of our deadlines. So when I tell you something's going to happen June 1st, uh, please don't call me on June the 2nd and ask me why it didn't happen. Uh, I think you have to realize this is Africa, and I think that uh, uh, you know, things will always take longer than you'd like them to. But I think we're getting better at it. I think we're getting more efficient, and I think that's our number one goal this year, is to spend less time and less money on each individual well. Um, it doesn't really make sense, but we, we will spend the same amount of money this year regardless of how many wells we drill. Because we pay for the drilling rig, we pay for the service contractors, we pay the overheads. Our costs are almost all fixed. So if we can drill a well in 60 days instead of drilling a well in 120 days, which is what we have been doing, we can drill the same, we can drill twice as many wells in the same time period as what we've been doing. So that's really a big focus this year, trying to be more efficient, drill more um, wells per dollar per rig. Um, we did drill two wells in Puntland, and we'll talk about the results of that. We're actually uh, happy for two reasons. Number one, we, uh, we drill them uh, uh, without any security incidents in a very difficult environment. And number two, it looks like we found a, a new petroleum system there. Uh, we had three of the four major components. We had charge, we had reservoir, we had 
uh, seal, we just didn't have a trap. So it did give us a lot of encouragement. We'll talk a little bit about that, but Horn Petroleum and Portland uh, uh, are, are going to go forward. In fact, we're looking at some new ventures in Horn, so uh, I think Horn uh, is one that, uh, even though it's uh, their price has suffered a bit, we're sticking with that, and I think you'll see us uh, putting some new ventures there in the next few months. Um, unfortunately, the, the happy days of Tullow paying our way and everything uh, ended last year, so we uh, we went out and found another partner called uh, Marathon, which is a, a big U.S. company, and they're going to be paying our way in three of our blocks going forward. They wrote us a check for $35 million that we're able to use uh, uh, in our four blocks in uh, Kenya and Ethiopia. Uh, but the three of those blocks, uh, and I'll show you which ones are fit, um, they'll be paying 100% of our cost this year and probably into 2014. So as Adolf Lundy used to say, we love, we love exploring with other people's money. And, uh, um, we bought him another person to pay the bills. If you want to take expiration risk to zero, do it with somebody else's money. Uh, again, the financing, we raised $232 million. We actually were offered $400 million. Uh, we're so proud of our stock uh, and what, what we think is going to happen with the price. Uh, we elected not to take the other $170 million. I hope I don't regret that decision going forward, but I think uh, uh, a few more discoveries, and I think uh, our goal is to raise money uh, uh, into the future at, at significantly higher prices than we're seeing today. I'm still struggling a little bit with our share price. Uh, when I came to see you last time, I think we had one discovery at Yamia. We had a reservoir that we weren't quite sure of. We didn't have enough money in the bank, uh, and we were trading for $10. Now we've made three discoveries. We've got $250 million in the bank. And we tested the well, and it looks like excellent reservoir, and we're trading for seven dollars. So I'm just a humble geologist, and I'm not necessarily all that good at math, but it certainly seems to me like we should be trading at a much higher price than, than we were with, uh, after our first discovery. But having said that, we were, I think I heard Robert, my Swedish is good enough to, to understand, he said we were the number one stock in Sweden last year. We're also the number one stock on the TSX Venture Exchange. So out of 2,200 companies in, in Toronto, uh, we were the number one with a 356% increase. And you can see the rest of the market was not really that good. They actually, the average was a minus 20% of, of all the stocks in the TSX ventures. So, uh, a nice ray of sunshine in a rather gloomy uh, uh, year of last year. <coughs> Most of you have seen this map before. I still would keep coming back to it because this really tells the story of, of why we're here and what we're trying to do. Now, if you look at the, the three countries we're in are Ethiopia, Kenya, and Somalia. And what always struck us when we started looking at this is there were three countries that hadn't had a well built in 20 years, and yet all around them, in Yemen, there's six billion barrels, and that Jurassic system seemed to extend into northern Somalia and even into northern Ethiopia. Uh, in Sudan, there's six billion barrels of oil, and the Cretaceous system seemed to extend into Kenya and the Anza Basin. Um, in, in the Ogaden Basin, there's a, a discovery here, which seems to be the same system as the Karoo system in Madagascar, where there's 24 billion barrels of oil. And in uh, the tertiary red system, um, uh, there's a, a discovery by Talo in Uganda, where they think there's one to two billion barrels of oil. And it's the same system as we have over here in Kenya and in, in Ethiopia. So that was the, what really got us started in this. We thought, you know, what, how can there be a petroleum systems that's extended here, surrounded on all sides by multi-billion barrels that nobody has explored in 20 years? So we spent a lot of time looking at the old wells that were drilled, and there were there was a round of uh, exploration by the major oil companies. In fact, they discovered a small oil field here in the Argument. They had some oil discovered here in the Nogal Basin by Conoco. Uh, Shell drilled a well here, and they, uh, uh, you know, very close to our two discoveries, that actually found a small oil field and walked away. So, uh, and then Amico and Total drilled a number of wells, uh, and our, our new partner Marathon was actually in some of those wells. And they got enough hints that it looked interesting, but the knock on East Africa was always, it's too small. There's no pipeline, there's no infrastructure, we'll never find enough oil to basically make it uh, worthwhile. And that's why they left. But of course, since then, all of this oil has been found around them, and now the big boys have realized they've made a mistake. So every week or two, I get a call from one of the big oil companies saying, how do we get in? And 
and say the same thing. Call me in about two years after I drilled all my wells and I find out how much oil I've got, and then maybe we can talk about the price. But we're not giving up right away, and the reason is because we've got such a big basin and we're so early in the uh, development. So this is just the tertiary basin and the Cretaceous basin superimposed on the North Sea. And what you can see is that just those blocks of ours are the size of the entire North Sea. So it's, it's very rare that a brand new basin opens up in, in this world. It's, it's rare that it's a basin the size of the North Sea, and it's pretty much unheard of that one company owns the entire basin. So um, this is early days. We've only drilled three wells, Quiga South, Gamia, and Pai Pai. We have, a little, we have three discoveries. But I, don't, I think Lucas Mundine and myself, neither, wants to, neither one of us wants to be the, the idiot that had potentially the, the next North Sea and sold out too early um, after we made three discoveries in a row. So I think for us, the important thing is we want to get, there's actually 10 sub-basins in this uh, area. We've really only proven two of those sub-basins now. So we have eight more basins to drill. And uh, none of us wants to sell out until we put a well in each one of those eight basins. It's very unlikely that all 10 basins are going to work, but I think it's also unlikely that all eight of the remaining basins are not going to work. I think there's a pretty good likelihood that one or two or maybe even three of those basins are gonna work. And each one of them has billion barrel potential. So I think that uh, it behooves us to go ahead and get a well in each one and find out if the petroleum system is working. Then maybe two years from now, we can start talking about what we wanna do with uh, some of the big oil companies. I think there are a number of alternatives at that point. We can either sell the whole company for cash, which we've done successfully in, in many other companies. Uh, we may elect to bring in a strategic partner, i.e. bring in a Shell or an Exxon, let them do the development uh, and uh, ourselves and Tuttle being carried through the uh, development. Or if it's just this basin here, which is the Lokachar Basin, we may elect to stay in and do our, our own uh, uh, production. But I think with Lending Petroleum and is getting a little more comfortable with going ahead and staying with the uh, uh, development. And I think we see this cash flow coming out of the North Sea, uh, the Nor Norwegian North Sea with uh, London Petroleum. And I think the family's starting to see that that could be a, a, a path to go. So I think we're two years away from making that decision. I think in, the, in two years' time, we'll sit down and we'll evaluate all three of those. But as long as we keep finding oil, uh, it's going to be a good decision. So again, we are going to be focusing on what we call the Lokachar Basin. The color code here, for those of you, uh, the, it's basically, this is the, the picture of the basin. The blue is the deepest part of the basin, and the red is the shallowest, the red and yellow are the shallowest parts of the basin. So this big hole here that we see in blue is what we call a cooking pot. This is where the source rocks are deposited and where they're currently pumping out oil. So the, the good part about the Lokachar Basin is we've got a very thick, very good source rock, and it's pumping out oil even today as we speak. So once we drilled, the, we, we knew there was oil in it by this well here, which was the old shell well drilled, Lokoro. But now that we've drilled our two discoveries, Gamia and Twiga, we're pretty confident that all of these uh, uh, prospects in here uh, are going